So when I reviewed the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, we shot it before the launch, and of course I had no idea about the pricing. So my guesstimate for the price of that phone fell short by a couple of thousands, which also meant that the real competitor to the Realme 10 Pro Plus turned out to be the Redmi Note 12 Pro. In fact, in the Redmi Note 12 series launched this year, the Redmi Note 12 Pro is easily the most interesting and probably the most exciting and most requested for review. And therefore, what I'm going to be doing in this video is reviewing this phone and comparing it against the Realme 10 Pro Plus to find out which one of these phones under rupees 25,000 because this one's available for under rupees 25,000 should you pick up right now. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad, you're watching Track It Day English. Let's start. Now, unlike the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, which had glass on the rear, the Redmi Note 12 Pro is made entirely of plastic, including the plastic sides as well, uh, which is similar to what the Realme has, which is also entirely plastic. But the Redmi Note 12 Pro has proper flat sides compared to the curved, entirely curved body of the Realme 10 Pro Plus. Now, since both these phones are made of plastic, they're extremely light to hold and use, but Realme is even lighter and the curves actually make it far more comfortable to hold as well. It's a very, very nice feeling phone in the hand. It's not like the Redmi is bad, but Realme is slightly better, subjectively, of course. Also, when you look at the Realme 10 Pro Plus and the Redmi Note 12 Pro side by side, the Realme will feel more premium primarily because it has that curved display on the front. Obviously, a lot of people will definitely feel that Realme is the better looking phone of the two. But looks will eventually fade away. But what won't fade away is the utility of the extras that you get in the industrial design of the Redmi Note 12 Pro. What I mean by that is that the Redmi Note 12 Pro, just like the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, has a headphone jack, it has an infrared scanner, and it has IP53 rating as well, all of which are not available on Realme. Furthermore, you've got stereo speakers on both these phones, right? But you get stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos on the Redmi Note 12 Pro. And when you compare these two phones side by side, the Redmi Note 12 Pro sounds better. You know what, take a listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think. So if you ask me, yes, the Realme 10 Pro Plus does look better, but I would rather prefer a functional design with so many extra useful features that are available on the Redmi Note 12 Pro for, you know, long-term use, of course. And I would also prefer if you guys would not just watch the videos and also subscribe to the channel because we do this for you and we would love all your support as well. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that bell icon right next to it. And of course, like and comment if you actually feel like liking the video because then the YouTube algorithm will share it with more people wanting to watch a comparison between the Redmi Note 12 Pro and the Realme 10 Pro Plus. Now let's talk about the displays. You get big displays on both these phones. The Realme has a 6.7 inch display. The Redmi has a nearly as big 6.67 inch display. Now both these displays are OLED panels, of course. You get 1 billion colors, 120 hertz refresh rate. All that makes, you know, displays awesome these days. But what Redmi does better than Realme is that it offers variable refresh rate, which means it, that it can switch between 30, 60 and 90, depending on the content that's playing on your screen. Furthermore, the peak brightness is 900 nits on the Redmi compared to 800 nits on the Realme. And that does help when you're watching HDR content. Talking about HDR, you get Dolby Vision and HDR 10 Plus support on Redmi, but only HDR 10 Plus on Realme. And moreover, Realme doesn't have Netflix HDR uh, you know, available at the moment, which is possible on Redmi. And when you look at Netflix videos side by side on both these phones, you can tell which one's better. I don't even have to name it. And the positives on the display front for the Redmi don't end there. You get Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection as well, which of course is not available on Realme. So what does Realme have? It has a curved panel. That's it. But as I can tell from the comments on many videos that I have watched till now, the Realme's curved panel seems to be a huge crowd puller, but it's a vanity metric if you ask me. Now let's talk about the in-display fingerprint scanner, which is also a part of the display and it's really fast on Realme and it's not available on Redmi because Redmi has a side-mounted physical fingerprint scanner, which a lot of people apparently don't prefer, but it doesn't really matter. Both are really fast to unlock, yeah? One area where Realme does do better than Redmi is in haptic feedback performance, which is not good at all on the Redmi Note 12 Pro. In fact, on the Pro Plus, it's actually better and slightly closer to Realme, and Realme doesn't have that easy of a win, but in this one, it's an easy win for Realme. Oh, haptics is great. Now let's talk about the camera setup on both these phones. You get a 108 megapixel Samsung HM6 sensor on the Realme, which is the primary camera, and you get a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766, which is one of my favorite, uh, you know, sensors out there. 
on the Redmi Note 12 Pro and with that you also get optical image stabilization which is not available on Realme. The rest of the setup you guys know 8MP plus 2MP plus 16MP on the front. It's the same on both. As usual I have a separate camera comparison video which you should go and check out. It should pop up in a link right now. But if you don't have that kind of an attention span for a long video once again, then I will tell you an abridged version of it in this video itself. For those who want to watch that video, this is going to be a spoiler alert. Now, when you talk about the primary camera in daylight shots, the center sharpness is mostly similar on both, but the corner sharpness is slightly better on, uh, you know, Redmi. But colors are slightly better reproduced on Realme and HDR is definitely uh, superior on Redmi. Since it is easier to fix colors in post even in JPEGs and not really easy to fix HDR, I think, uh, you know, when it comes to primary camera performance in daylight, uh, Redmi is better. Now, if you are shooting friends and family, you will easily prefer Redmi for the warm facial tones, balanced exposure and great HDR. In fact, even portrait mode pictures look better on Redmi compared to Realme. Now, low light shots using the primary camera are mostly matched on Redmi and Realme. But if you do extreme low light, Realme does it better. Ultra wide in daylight, Redmi has sharper textures and superior dynamic range with well controlled highlights and you know lesser noise in the shadows. Low light night mode correction is better on ultra wide. Selfie camera is sharp and detailed on both but facial tones are more pleasing on Realme but night mode selfies are over sharpened on Realme. Macro is obviously better on Redmi because that is Redmi's strong suit. Now both these phones can shoot 4K 30 FPS videos. Now since Redmi has OIS you get slightly stable footage uh, compared to Realme of course and you do get far better sound recording, higher bit rate as well. So overall for 4K 30 FPS videos I think uh, Redmi is better. But in 1080p 60fps videos, you get super stabilization on Realme, which is definitely an advantage. But when you come back to 1080p 30fps, Redmi wins again. You only get 1080p 30fps videos on ultra wide and selfie on Realme. Redmi, you get 1080p 60fps videos on selfie, which is very good. Overall, Redmi is better for selfie videos, but Realme is better for ultra wide. Now, I did mention in my camera comparison, and I'm repeating that out here. If I had to pick one of these two phones for camera performance, I would side with the Redmi. Now let's talk about overall performance and the specs inside. You do get a MediaTek Dimensity 1080 chip on both these phones. You are aware of that. And you also get storage with UFS 2.2 speeds and uh, you know LPDDR4X RAM as well. Now if you're looking for phones in this price category, you can get phones with the Snapdragon 778G or even the Redmi K50i which comes with Dimensity 8100. Maybe there might be a Snapdragon 870 phone also in this price range. So yeah, those phones are definitely going to be better for performance. Now as for performance, it's largely similar on both. You get slightly better Anti-2 and Geekbench scores on the Realme 10 Pro Plus compared to the Redmi Note 12 Pro. But yeah, I mean, you can't tell that in daily, of course. And the performance is largely similar even on the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. And when you're talking about CPU stability scores, whether it's CPU throttle or 3 Mark wireless stress test, there's very little to separate the two, except for the fact that if you are nitpicking, Realme probably runs slightly cooler. But these are, you know, mid-range uh, chips that don't push for performance per se. All right, now let's talk about network performance. You get 5G on both these phones. So I tested Airtel and Geo on both the phones and both these phones are very good with Geo 5G and Airtel 5G and you get very good speeds as well. No complaints whatsoever. Although I do want to discuss one thing. Geo 5G has been terrible with calls. Are you guys also facing that? Let me know in the comment section below. I think it switches to Geo 4G for calls. I'm not so sure about it, but you know, there's something off and there's a lot of call drop that happens. Thankfully, Airtel is my primary, so that doesn't really bother me too much. But I did notice Geo has not been great for calls lately. Now talking about battery life, you get 5000 mAh on both these phones even the charging speeds are same 67 watt and battery performance is very similar you cannot say that you know realme offers better battery life than redmi because you get 8 to 10 hours of screen on time on both these phones depending on your usage and charging speeds are also largely similar anywhere between 45 to 50 minutes to charge from 0 to 100 so there's again nothing separating the two while performance and network performance and battery performance were all very similar on both these phones what's starkly different is software experience now i did mention in my redmi note 12 pro plus review as well, you get MIUI 13 based on Android 12 even on the Redmi Note 12 Pro. Now on Realme, you get Realme UI based on Android 13. So yeah, Android 13 is already available here and both these brands offer, you know, two years of software updates, which means that you can expect Android 14 and 15 on Realme, but on Redmi, you'll get Android 13 and 14. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. If you're somebody who cares for platform updates, then Realme would be the better bet for you. But you know what, the Realme UI experience right now is not the best. I hope that Realme does improve it because it's pushy with personalized search notifications. There are a lot of dark patterns when you're setting up the phone, which makes you, you know, opt for a lot of things that you don't want to opt for. And then there are, of course, way too many bloatware apps which keep sending you notifications as well. Thankfully, you can switch off all of that 
and use it. And that's when you'll realize that otherwise it's a very clean minimal software, which is a very similar to ColorOS and OxygenOS as well. But MIUI has improved a lot and now it keeps the bloatware on the low. And of course, it has also improved, uh, you know, on the ads front as well. Plus MIUI also offers a lot of features which a lot of MIUI fans love using. So that's definitely one thing that's good on MIUI. So if you're looking at the software front, both have their share of pros and cons, but which one to choose for will totally depend on what you want. Now both these phones are competing for your attention for the under 25,000 category because of course the base variants of both these phones are available for under rupees 25,000. But I'd suggest the Redmi Note 12 Pro over the Realme 10 Pro Plus if you can live with the fact that it comes with MIUI 13 based on Android 12, that is older software, because the Redmi Note 12 Pro has a more functional design with a headphone jack, an infrared blaster, and IP53 rating, better quality display with Dolby Vision support available on Netflix, Corning Gorilla Glass 5, is just way good looking compared to just the flashy curved display on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. And an overall better camera experience as well. These are things that will matter when you're making the purchase because everything else considered like the performance, uh, you know, the battery life, the network performance, all of that is very similar on both the phones. So now that you know the distinction, which one did you go for? Let me know in the comment section below. For more such cool videos, don't forget to subscribe to Track and Tech English and see you guys in the next one. Keep tracking and stay safe.